Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how you can find the center of rotation without the help of a ruler and a compass. Now, one way to find out the center of rotation is with the help of a ruler and compass, and that is uh, how we draw a perpendicular bisector. And with the help of that, we can find the center. Okay, But the problem with that, although that method is absolutely legit, I've made a video on it. I'll share it with you guys in the description box. You can go check it out if, uh, if you want to learn that method. But the problem with that method is that uh, the answer is not always accurate. I mean, you have to be very careful when making the perpendicular bisectors so that you end up with an accurate answer. Now, there is a workaround uh, and you should know what this workaround is. You should always have a plan B. And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you guys today. Now, however, that method making a perpendicular bisector is only for 90 degrees. So regardless of whatever method you use, perpendicular bisector will only be drawn if the angle of rotation is 90 degrees. So what happens if the angle of rotation is 180 degrees? So that in that, you don't have to make a perpendicular bisector at all. So let's have a look at this question over here. It says, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. Now over here, I purposefully kept it 180 degrees just so that I can explain how exactly do you find out the center. Now, one thing is that once you've established that, yes, this is rotation, how do you identify whether it's 180 degrees or 90 degrees? So you pick any one line. So I'm going to pick this horizontal line over here. And notice that even after rotating it, this line has remained horizontal. So how many degrees do you need to rotate a horizontal line in order to make sure that it stays horizontal? Well, the answer to that is 180 degrees, okay? So that means we have now successfully established that this is rotation. This is rotation 180 degrees. Now, one thing, one missing piece of the puzzle over here is the center. So whenever you say rotation, remember uh, rotation is defined by the angle the direction and the center. Now with 180, there's no need to write down the direction because one clockwise, 180 degree clockwise or 180 degree anti-clockwise is the same thing. Now what we do need to find out is the center. So finding the center of rotation when it's 180 degrees is the easiest thing there is. All you have to do is, in the first step, you have to pick any one object and its corresponding image. So just like the ones that I've highlighted and join them with the help of a straight line. So let's do just that. So there you go. We have joined an object with its image with the help of a straight line. Now, this is not enough. Now, what you need to do is you need to pick any other object and join it with its corresponding image. Okay, so the one that I'm going to choose now is, let me highlight it with a different color. So if you look at this point over here, so this point after it has been rotated 180 degrees has landed over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join this with the help of a straight line. I'm going to pick a different color now. Let's go with blue. And once you've joined these two points, you'll notice that your lines are intersecting at a certain point. And this point of intersection is the center of rotation and it has coordinates minus two comma two. So there you go. Your center of rotation is minus two comma two. Okay. So this is for 180 degrees. Now let's see what is the case when you have to rotate it or when the object is rotated 90 degrees. Let's see how exactly can we find out the center then. Okay, so here's another possible question. In this, we're going to learn how exactly do we find out the center of rotation when the angle is 90 degrees, okay? So this is from May June 2021, paper 12. It says here, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. Now, before we get into finding the center of rotation, one thing that I want to point out over here is that normally students get confused between reflection and rotation. So how do you decide, how do you narrow it down from reflection to rotation, reflection and rotation to just one? Well, the way to do that is that you just join all the points, okay? Now remember, we're not joining these points to find out the center of rotation. You only do that to, uh, in, in the case of 180 degrees, okay? So once you join the points, you'll notice that your lines are not parallel, okay? So if the lines, after you've joined them, they're not parallel, or you can just do it mentally, you can just visualize that you're joining an object with its corresponding image and then decide whether the lines are going to be parallel or not. So we can clearly see that they're not parallel, that means it's definitely not rotation, it, uh, reflection, sorry, it's definitely not reflection, it's definitely rotation, okay? So this is one way you can narrow down or you can distinguish between reflection and rotation. Okay, now, now that we know that this is rotation, so let's write that down. So this is a three mark question. So you get one mark for writing down the rotation, one mark for the angle and direction. So angle has to be 90 degrees. It can only be 90 degrees. Why? Because if you look at this line, this is horizontal before rotating it. And after we've rotated it, it's vertical. So how many degrees do you have to rotate a horizontal line to make it vertical? Well, the answer is 90 degrees. And since it has gone this way, so that means this is clockwise, 90 degree 
clockwise okay now comes the difficult part well i shouldn't say difficult but now comes the tricky part and that is finding out the center of rotation okay so let's see how we can find out the center of rotation over here so one thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to pick an object and its corresponding image and i'm going to highlight as we go along so i'm going to pick these points that i've highlighted in red and i'm going to find their midpoint okay okay so now let's write down the coordinates minus two minus four and minus two comma two okay so let's find out the uh, the midpoint so minus two plus minus two upon two comma minus four plus two upon two okay so minus two plus minus two is minus four minus four upon two is minus two there you go and uh, minus four plus two is minus two minus two upon two is minus one okay so now we have the midpoint and the midpoint is minus two minus one okay now the next thing that you have to do is you have to take any one point either the object or the image yes you have to take any one point either the object and the image and rotate it 90 degree clockwise or anti degree uh, or uh, 90 degree anti-clockwise okay it doesn't matter so we have the midpoint and from the midpoint i can take the image doesn't matter like i said you can take the image or the object uh, it's difficult to uh, it's it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around this that we can what we, we really can do it clockwise or anti-clockwise it's not going to make a difference yes the answer is it's not going to make a difference and yes you can do it with the object or the image it doesn't matter okay so let's say i take the image and i rotate it 90 degree clockwise or even anti-clockwise so since this is three units up if i rotate it 90 degree anti-clockwise sorry that means it's going to go three units to the right so this is where it's going to end up and now that i have two points i'm just going to join these two points and extend them and now what do we have we have a perpendicular bisector okay so we could have done this with the help of a ruler and compass also but since we didn't want to do that we're doing it with the help of uh, you know counting counting boxes basically okay now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing but we're going to do it for a different with with a different set of points okay so let's take these two points the ones that i've highlighted in blue so the coordinates of this point are minus 2 comma 0 and the coordinates of this point are 2 comma 2 so let's find out the midpoint of these two points so minus 2 plus 2 upon 0 comma 0 plus 2 upon 2 so minus 2 plus 2 is 0 0 upon 2 is 0 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 upon 2 is 1, okay. So now that we have the midpoint, okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take again any one point, the object or the image and rotate it 90 degree clockwise or anti-clockwise. In fact, this time, you know what, this time I'm going to take the object just to prove it to you guys that it doesn't matter whether you take the object or the image. Okay, so the object is two units to the left and one unit down. So let's say I rotate this 90 degree anti-clockwise so that means this will go two units clockwise in fact sorry again it doesn't matter in fact you know what let's do it 90 degree anti-clockwise so two, this is going to go two units downwards and one unit to the left okay now what how exactly am i doing this well i have a video on this where we use this weird looking sign to do rotation you know you can do it with the help of that okay now once we've done this we have two points that we can join and extend and now what do we have we have a perpendicular bisector now, once you do this, you'll realize that the two lines that you've just made are intersecting. Okay, now let me highlight that point. That point is right over here. And this you can see has coordinates one comma minus one. So that means we finally have the center and the center is one comma minus one. And there you go. This is how you can find the center of rotation with the help of without basically using a ruler and a compass okay now there is a quite another question that i've attached over here this question i'd like you guys to try and let me know in the comment section whether or not you were able to do this successfully if not uh, although i really hope you're able to do it but if not you know i'll make another video on it and share it with you guys okay so i really hope you guys have understood this concept i highly encourage you guys to practice this at home to fully get the hang of it and again if this method is something you're not too comfortable with then you can always use or uh, stick to making the perpendicular bisector with the conventional way okay i'll leave a link to that video that i made for you guys to watch okay so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one until then take care Bye bye